Katrina Young. I'm here with Team USA Diving and Ready, Set, Gold. I'm so excited to share part of my journey and what's helped me become an Olympian in my sport of diving with you. My start to diving was due to my sibling, my older sister, who I wanted to be just like, as I'm sure many of you can relate to, wanting to be just like your sibling. Um, so my sister would be diving and I'd be in gymnastics and I would go watch her dive after I was done practicing gymnastics and I just loved how she could bounce on the board, fly through the air, dive in the water with such grace and I just wanted to be just like her. So I would go after gymnastics and convince my parents to let me dive. And after I got a taste of it, I fell in love. I loved every second of diving. And I started in my club team in Seattle, Washington. It was called Pacific Northwest Diving. So I would go to practice and I made great friends at practice. It was such a blast. And as I progressed in it, I just realized that I had the ability to eventually become an Olympic diver. And part of that journey is really believing in yourself. And part of it is having the courage to fail, which I want to talk to you guys about. So when I started diving, obviously I had a lot of acrobatic experience from my gymnastics training, which was super fun to be able to apply that into my diving career. However, going head first instead of feet first, like in gymnastics, is a little different. So I had to learn how to be spatially aware in the air and get onto my head into the water. Now this entailed a lot of going this way, not this way or this way. I smacked, we call it a smack in diving when you go flat, you do a belly flop. And obviously that's not the best feeling. So I had to go through a little pain to get to the other side. I think that's the first thing I want to talk to you about is when you find a sport that you're truly in love with or a passion in life at all, having the courage to fail is so important. You have to get through the hard part to get to the sunny side. You got to go through the storm to get to the rainbow, that kind of thing. And I was really encouraged by my family and friends to keep being resilient and keep pushing myself through the hard part to get to the other side. So I felt really grateful. I still feel grateful for my dad, my mom, my sister, you know, all my teammates who have helped me get through all of those hard parts. And that is one of the biggest lessons that I carry with me is it's okay to fail. It's okay to smack and belly flop because that's part of the process. So as I got into um, my teenage years of diving, I was excited to hopefully get a scholarship to college. And I was lucky enough to go to Florida State University, go Knowles. And um, I learned so much from my coach there and eventually the year after I graduated was able to go to the Rio Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And that was my first taste of the Olympic Games, which was incredible. You know, the beaches, all of the people, the music, the culture of Brazil was incredible. And then the Olympic Games on top of that, walking in for the opening ceremony, it was a, just a jaw-dropping experience and something that after that Olympics, I knew I had to come back for another. And now I'm going to try my third Olympic Games in Paris. And on this journey, I have gone through so many failures and so many successes. And so that's part of my story. I remember one of my first big competitions, a world championships, I hit my feet on the platform. I did my dive and I was too close to the platform. I hit my feet and I just ricocheted into the water. And it was so embarrassing. One of the most embarrassing moments of my life. And I was in front of the world judges, my world competitors from every country, and I wanted to show off and be the best. But, you know, some, sometimes we make mistakes, and I made a really big mistake in my technique. So I had to come back and do the rest of my four dives. And I had to somehow hold my head high and shake it off, as Taylor Swift says, shake it off, <laughs> and just keep going. And that is something that you have to find inside of you, that resilience and that courage to be able to shake it off, be okay with being embarrassed. We're all humans out there. We're all just trying to do our best. And don't worry about if somebody kind of like looks at you some kind of way. Just be yourself and that's enough. You is enough, I promise you, because I am going on to my third Olympic Games right now and I have just been myself. Number one thing is to be yourself. So when you face your fears, you are having the courage to fail. You are looking your fear in the face and saying, I'm going to face you, good or bad, I have the courage to face my fear. 
And this is one of the most character building things that you can do for yourself and a way to reach your highest goals. So that is not an easy thing. You need to rely on your community, rely on people who you trust to help you push yourself to your highest ability. And for me, having the courage to fail has given me the ability to succeed. So I believe in all of you. You can face your fears and you can have the courage to fail. Today, I'm going to take you through a yoga flow. A yoga flow is something where you put different moves together to find your balance, find your flexibility, and find your strength. For me, yoga has been an integral part of my routine to warm up for my diving, to find my balance, to find my strength, and to center myself. I'll explain each yoga move to you as we go through it, and we'll connect all of the yoga moves together, and that's called the yoga flow. So are you guys ready for yoga? Because I am. And that's how I start my practice every day with a yoga flow. So I wanna take you through a yoga flow that I love to do is to center yourself, which means trying to find your balance and let go of other things that are distracting to you and just have one focus. So I use yoga to find one focus, which is what I need for diving. We're going to start with a downward dog. A downward dog is where you put your hips in the air, try to get your feet flat on the ground. It's okay if your heels are up, just see how far your heels can get down. Let your head hang heavy, and you're gonna get a really good stretch through here, through your hamstrings. Now I want you to lift one leg in the air. This is called a three-legged downward dog. Reach your foot back into space and really feel that stretch. You're gonna pull your knee to your nose into a runner's lunge. I want you to lift your arms, really feeling your hip stretch through the front of your body. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath out, and goal post your arms. When you goal post your arms, feel your chest open up, feel the length, tip your chin up, and we're going to go into a three-legged, actually a warrior three. So this is gonna help you find your balance. Notice my foot is wiggling a little bit. I'm just finding my balance through the ground, and I'm going to lift up into a three-legged Tadasana. Again, finding my balance, deep breath in, and deep breath out. Now, from here, I love to go into a tree pose. So what you're gonna do is bring your leg to the side. I'm gonna turn toward you guys. Leg is out to the side, opening up through your hip. You're going to feel the four corners of your foot push down into the ground. Finding your balance, deep breath in, and deep breath out, hands at heart center. Now from here, you can grow your branches of your tree up and out. You can do whatever you want. Just feel the length, feel the joy of yoga and bring it back down heart center. That's one flow, bringing your foot down, arms out to the side, and we end in Tadasana. Stand your ground. So deep breath in and deep breath out. That's the first flow and we're gonna start it on the next side. You're going to put your hands on the ground, put your hips in the air, and shoot your hips back as far as they go. Try to get your heels down. We're going to let our head hang heavy and deep breath in, deep breath out. Now I want you to shoot your left foot up into the air, back in space. Take a deep breath. As you breathe out, bring your knee to your nose and step it through for a runner's lunge. Bringing your arms up to the sky, feel the, the length all the way through your hip. Breathe in, breathe out, and goal post your arms. Chin up, let your shoulders go down your back, and we're going to go into warrior three, finding your balance, back foot flexed. I really want you to be long through your back here, really focusing on breathing, your strength through your hamstring, and your balance through your foot. Now, we're going to bring our foot up into what I call a three-legged Tadasana, and you're going to take another deep breath and deep breath out. Turning your leg out, we'll now go into our tree pose. It can go up or down your leg as far as you want. When we do our tree pose, it's important that we turn our hip out and we're focused on our bottom leg pushing down into the ground. So I like to put my hands at heart center here. Take a deep breath and deep breath out. Now you can grow your branches, be any kind of tree that you want to be, stretching out. You can bring your hands behind your back. Look up, look forward, finding your focus, taking a deep breath 
and bring your hands back down to heart center. Now we're going to bring our leg down, arms down to the side, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and we're landing in Tadasana, stand your ground. Okay guys, we're at the bonus round of yoga, learning how to do a handstand through yoga. I love handstands because I dive off of my hands on the platform. So it's obviously a dangerous thing, so be very cautious when you're learning to do a handstand. Take steps to make sure that you're safe. Have a soft landing around you. Maybe it's a couch cushion, maybe it's a mat. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do, if you're with me trying to learn how to do a handstand, is go back in a downward dog position. Hands down, walk your feet back, hips back, feeling the earth beneath you, pushing your hands, feeling the strength, pushing your feet down. Take a deep breath in, bend your knees, and we're going to push our hips up in the air. Just starting to feel our shoulders work, feeling the strength through our shoulders, and maybe eventually you get up into a handstand. So as you go, you can get up all the way into a handstand. And the more that you practice, the more that you can hold it. As you come down, you're just gonna bring your feet down and roll all the way back up, reach up to the sky and heart center. Thank you guys for trying a handstand with me. Thank you guys for joining me in my yoga flow. I personally love yoga. It really helps clear the distractions from my mind and focus on what I love to do, my sport of diving. I know that yoga can help you guys too and I hope that you guys try it at home. Thank you guys for joining Ready, Set, Gold and me today and I believe in every one of you. Go achieve your dreams. I want to give a special shout out to the Foundation for Global Sports Development and Sidewinder Films. Thank you for making this possible.